in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. He's the one and only God, the absolute God. Never did he beget, nor was he begotten. None equals him. O people of the scripture, let us come to a logical agreement between us and you that we shall not worship except God, that we never idolize any human beings beside God. If you turn away, then bear witness that we are submitters. If you refuse to accept this invitation, then bear witness that we only submit to the Lord of the universe, the creator of all things. O children of Adam, our God is one and the same God. There is no other God beside God. And those who are tearing us into pieces between religions, sects, and denominations do not belong with God. They belong with their business establishments. They belong with the dark side. They belong with Satan. This year is the year 2014, which is 19 times 106. It is 40 years after the revelation of the Quran's 19 based miracle in 1974. And we should remember that the only ni number 19 that is mentioned in the Quran is in chapter 74. 40 is the age of perfection, is the number that points at completion. Remember that Moses was summoned to Mount Sinai for 40 nights? When Israelites disobeyed God, they were punished, they became homeless, roaming earth aimlessly for 40 years. Prophet Muhammad, the final prophet, was commissioned to proclaim his prophethood and the Quran was sent down to him at the age of 40. Now, 2014 is 40 years after the revelation of the Quran's awesome, awesome 19-based mathematical miracle. If we go to Surah 48, the title of the Surah 48 is Victory. And let us go and read the first verse. Look at the first verse. The first verse, it says, We have bestowed upon you a great victory. This verse is made of five words, 19 letters. And this ob obviously is point at the fact that this victory is going to be achieved after the revelations of the Quran's 19-based mathematical miracle. And if you go to Surah 5, ayah number 19, you'll read that God says, O people of the scripture, our messenger has come to you to explain things to you after a period of time without messengers, lest you say we did not receive any preacher or warner. A preacher and warner has now come to you. God is omnipotent. This is Surah 5, verse number 19. Glory is to God. God's victory, the victory of God's religion, is right around the corner. It's not a coincidence that in the United States, in this 2014, the Congress 114 is going to be elected on November 4th. And 114 is the number of the surahs in the Quran. In America, we say November 4th. We don't say 4th of November. From 114 
from November 4th to the end of the year, there are 57 days. And the Quran, Al Quran, is mentioned in the Quran 57 times. This is the year. This is the year that God's victory is going to be placed in a fast forward move. And God willing, by the year 2018, great majority of the Americans are going to truly understand and appreciate the significance of La ilaha illallah, which means there is no other God beside God. This nation shall be truly a nation under God, indivisible for all. The truth shall prevail. Almighty God has decreed that the truth shall prevail and the falsehood shall vanish in spite of the idol worshippers, in spite of the evildoers, and in, in spite of any opposition. No force can stop God's forces. This is Surah 8, verse number 8. 8 is the index of 19. 19 is the 8th prime number. Let us go to Surah 8 and see what we find. If we go to Surah 8, we see that the, the word God is mentioned 88 times in 52 of the verses. And 19 times 52 is 988. And that is that, that takes us to Surah, the proof. Surah 98 in the Quran has eight verses. Now, the sum of these 52 verse numbers is 2166. And remember, 66 is the geometrical value of the word God in Arabic. And 2166 is 19 times 114, which is the number of the surahs in the Quran. The truth shall prevail and the falsehood shall vanish. The time has come. Satan is aware of this, that his end is right around the corner. So he's going to do all he can from all different directions to create distraction and disturbance. There are human devils among the so-called Christians. There are human devils among the so-called Jews, Jewish people, Zionists. And worst of all, there are human devils among those who call themselves Muslims because they have abandoned the Quran. Surah 25, ayah number 30. In the day of resurrection, uh, Prophet Muhammad is going to say, My Lord, my people have deserted this Quran. They are following their own man-made innovations and fabrications. By, and by the mean of these fabrications, they have torn themselves between all these sects and being so murderous against one another. When Almighty God in the Quran, with the, the strongest word, tells us not to break our religion into sects. Despite all these things, the truth shall prevail. God's victory, the victory of God's religion is right around the corner. There are a few issues, God willing, I'm going to try to explain in here. There are a lot of misconceptions that devils, like I said, among the so-called Christians and the Jews and the Muslims, they come up with all kinds of lies about Prophet Muhammad and against the Quran because Satan knows that this is the Quran that is going to bring the corrupted foundation of the Pauline church down to the ground. This is this Quran that is going to bring the so-called religious locations, places of worship, that they are worshipping other gods beside God down to the ground. So obviously, he's going to do everything he can to put a bad name on the Quran. 
the Muslims who are not following the so-called Muslims who are not following the Quran and they are doing their actions are completely against the teachings of the Quran they are the worst enemies of this religion because they are putting a very bad name on the religion of submission which is the religion of Abraham he is the one who called us Muslims in the first place Surah 22 verse number 78 He's the one who called us submitters. He's the one who called us all Muslims. And he was before Moses was, and, was, and he was before Jesus was, and he was before Muhammad was. Prophet Muhammad was commanded to follow, to follow the religion of Abraham. Many places in the Quran this has been pointed out. But specifically in Surah 16, ayah number 123, Almighty God tells Prophet Muhammad to follow the religion of Abraham. All the practices of the religion of Abraham, all the practices of the religion of Islam came through Prophet Abraham. But they lost the practices. The only duty of the, of the, of the Prophet Muhammad was to deliver the Quran, the whole Quran, nothing but the Quran. And that is clearly pointed out in Surah 6, Ayah number 19. People who may think that, well, well, you know, just delivering the Quran is not a big deal because they don't know what this Quran is all about. This Quran is the greatest miracle. This is a miracle that all humanity, from the time of the revelation of its miracle, they can witness it. The, the miracles of Moses, Prophet Moses and Prophet Jesus, were witnessed by limited number of the people who were at the time at the right place. The rest of them they had to believe because some other people were talking about it. But the miracle of the Quran that we are just touching the surface of it at this time is perpetual. It can be witnessed by anybody at any time. This Quran is a living book. It is God's message messenger. It is the Khatam al Mursaleen. Prophet Muhammad was Khatam al Nabiyyin. Prophet Muhammad was the seal of the prophets. And this Quran that was delivered through Prophet Muhammad is Khatam al Mursaleen. And we will prove it to the world that it is true. It is just mind boggling. So speaking of the misconceptions about Prophet Muhammad, because once they start a lie, they're going to tell other lies to cover the first lie, and then they, they're going to tell you the third lie to cover the, the second lie, and keep on lying. That's why when you go to some of these mosques here and there, what do you hear? You don't hear anything about the Quran anymore. You hear about what these mullahs and ayatollahs or whatever else you want to call them, they are going to preach. If you go to Surah 42, number, number uh, uh, 21, verse number 21, Almighty God says they are following the religious scholars who decree for them religious laws never authorized by God. Read the, read the Quran. Go to Surah 9, ayah number 31. They are following their uh, religious leaders they have decided that the word of the religious leaders are should be over and above the word of God. There are misconceptions about Prophet Muhammad. And obviously, like I said, lies upon lies and lies and the human devils among the so-called Christians and the Jews and the uh, Muslims, so-called monotheistic religions, they're going to do everything to really put a bad name on the real religion of Islam, which is the religion of submission to God alone. One of the misconceptions is that they say Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. The Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. He could not read or write. First of all, if we go to, uh, if we study the history of religions, the prophets. Do we know of any of the prophets that they were illiterate? God said about 
the Messiah Jesus that he taught him the Torah and gave him the gospel taught him the Torah and gave him the gospel and my question has always been where's the gospel of the Jesus of Nazareth the son of Mary what have they done to it have they burned it have they destroyed it because the gospels that we have today they're not gospels of Jesus their gospels according to according to according to according to and they even do not confirm each other most of the times and Moses of course we know for a fact that in the Torah the first five books belongs to Moses let me take you to uh, Surah 80 and uh, look at some verses together This verse, this surah, when we read from the context of it, we understand that it is specifically related to Prophet Muhammad. If we read it from the first verse down. But what we are going to focus, concentrate, are the four verses down in here. It says, In the honorable scripture, exalted and pure. Now verse number 15 is the one that we are going to be talking about the truth of the matter is that it is written by the hands of messengers who are honorable and right and righteous the so-called muslim scholars have come up with the idea that no no it's not by the hands of the messengers it is by the hands of the scribes they are all, they are the ones who are honorable and righteous so what we're gonna do it God willing in here ask Almighty God to help us by the verses of the Quran to understand exactly what the truth is and remember the truth shall prevail and the time has come is it verse number 15 is it written by the hand of messengers or written by the hands of scribes Look, God's system never changes. This is what God is. God's system never changes. God is not going to have uh, prophets who come with the scripture and they are learning it. Then all of a sudden he is going to have the final one who is going to be delivering the most important document in the history of humanity from the time of his revelations to the end of the world. Nothing is going to be more important than the Quran. God is going to have all the rest of the prophets educated. They can write it with their own hands. Only Prophet Muhammad, the one who is supposed to deliver the most important document, is supposed to be uneducated. When Almighty God says, Allahu wahdahu, God alone, God alone, we have to put our trust in God alone. And then, the final prophet is supposed to put his trust in the scribes to write the scripture. God says, use your brains. God says, you shall not accept any information unless you verify it for yourself. I've given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and you're responsible for using them. Does it really make sense that the Khatam and Nabiyin, the seal of the prophets, delivering the Quran, put his trust in this, the scribes, one, two, three, whatever, to write the Quran down. And he cannot even go in and read it and find out that they wrote what he told them to write. What a gross injustice against Prophet Muhammad. What a blasphemy against the Almighty God. The omniscient Lord of the universe sends his final prophet and let him be dependent upon the scribes? Look, Prophet Muhammad was a successful merchant. Those days, numbers did not exist as we have them now. He was Amin, he was a righteous merchant. People were trusting him with their properties, assets. He was keeping accounts a good accountant numbers did not exist so he 
had to know the letters of the alphabet in Arabic. Abjad, Hawaz, Hutti, uh, Kalman, Safas. He had to know these things because that's the way they were doing business. Hebrew, Aramaic, the same way. Greek had even their own letters with numbers the same way. Because numbers as we have them did not exist. Prophet Muhammad was a successful merchant. The Quran was sent down through him. The longest verse in the Quran is in is Surah 2, Ayah number 282. It is about the financial trans transactions. This is the longest verse in the Quran. The man who is illiterate is a successful merchant. And... Uh, he is bringing the book that Almighty God says, when you do transactions, write them down, don't get bored with the details, write every detail of it down, the longest verse in the Quran, and then the prophet is illiterate. Does it really make sense? If anybody thinks that, that they're really doubting God's wisdom, Allah. what a blasphemy. What a blasphemy. Now, let's look at some of the verses in the Quran. The first revelation to Prophet Muhammad was in Surah 96. Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from an embryo. Read and your Lord most exalted teaches by the mean of the pen. He teaches man what he never knew. He teaches by the mean of the pen. What is the function of the pen? What do you do with the pen? Almighty God, right at the beginning, is reminding the Prophet, use the pen. This information needs to be documented. Read it. Proclaim it. And write it down. And he, Muhammad, the utmost submitter, the utmost Muslim of his time, is going to put his trust in the scribes. There were scribes. Yes, they were copying it. They were copying the Quran from the Quran that was revealed with the mediation of Gabriel to Prophet Muhammad and he was writing it down with his own pen. They were copying it for the sake of safekeeping it. It is like, you know, in, the computer, in, in our time, we, we make copies of things and keep them in case something happens to the original copy. Not only that, there were other people that they were supposed to memorize the verses. They were com human computers to save the verses. They were advised to take all the precautions. Be careful because they were not in a very safe environment. And the verses of the Quran, of course, Almighty God can, could have sent one book all of a sudden and preserves it and as Almighty God says in Surah 15 verse number 9. For sure we have sent it down and for sure we will preserve it. But look, God gives us humans, God is doing everything, but he gives us the opportunity to do things to earn some credit. Surah 8, ayah number 17. Now, the first revelation, Almighty God points at the Kalam, which means the pen. Now, let's go to the second revelation. This is the first revelation. Let's go to the second revelation. The second revelation revealed to Prophet Muhammad is uh, Surah 68. Noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun. Noon, the pen, and what the people write. Look, 
the first two revelations, the first revelation, the second revelation, Almighty God is pointing at the Qalam. Would Almighty God talk to, about the Qalam to Prophet Muhammad if he was uneducated? What a blasphemy. What a nonsense. Attributing to God and his messenger. Noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun. Now, let's go and uh, read a couple of verses. If you go to Surah 25, ayah number 4, it says, Those who disbelieve said, This is a fabrication that he produced with the help of some other people. They have uttered a blasphemy and a falsehood. Now, verse number 5, it says, They also said tales from the past that he, Muhammad, that he wrote down. They were dictated to him day and night. This is what God is saying in the Quran. This is what God is saying in the Quran. <laughs> they, it is says, they, they say, they claim this is a tales from the past that he wrote down. He, he, they were dictated to. Now, how could he write them down? How could he take dictations if he was, if he was illiterate? Now, let's go to Surah 29, verse number 48. And up there, of course, you can see Baqalu Asatir al Avvalin Attabaho Fahia Tomalla Alayhe Bekaratan Vasilan. Now, if you go to the, to the next verse, it says what? You did not read the previous scriptures. Wama Kunta Tatlu Men Gablehi Men Ketaban. You did not read the previous scriptures. Nor did you write it down, write them down with your hands. Would Almighty God talks about his final prophet if he was illiterate? Or if he was, if he was illiterate, obviously he couldn't read the previous scriptures. Some people, of course, they, they, they say, oh, this guy has taken, because some of they see the similarities between the verses in the Quran and uh, the, the Torah, especially the Torah, and they say he, he was copying from the Torah. And God says, no, he didn't, he didn't read the previous scriptures, nor did he write them down. In that case, the rejecters would have had reason to harbor doubts. Look, Almighty God, the knower of all secrets and declarations, The fact that if his Khatam and Nabiyin, the, the final prophet, was uh, illiterate or literate, it was known to Almighty God. Almighty God clearly is telling us in the Quran that he was literate. He was educated. He could read. He could write. He wrote the Quran with his own hand. All the Quran that came, that the, the surahs and the verses that they came down in accordance with God's will and with the mediation of Gabriel was dictated, was, was given to him and he wrote it down with his own hands. All of God's messengers, all of God's prophets did the same thing. God's system never changes. Don't, those who think that God is going to change his mind, they are blaspheming against God. God's system never changes. He wrote it down. They were, yes, the scribes that they were copying from Muhammad's writing to make sure it has been safeguarded. It, it's been kept. Another issue that I want to point out, another thing that has been a source of confusion for a lot of people not understanding what Ummi or Ummiyun means. They think Ummi means illiterate. Ummi does not mean illiterate. Ummi means people, a person, without the knowledge of the scripture. 
Let us just examine some of the verses in the Quran. Let's go, let us go to Surah 2, verse number 78. And uh, if when you read the verse, you, you see that it is the context of the verse shows that this is not this is about the Jews. The Jewish people very wrongfully they consider say we're the Jews and the rest of the world is uh, is uh, is not they're omiyun they're gen you know Gentiles and which I, but the, in this verse particularly when you look at it it says وَمَنْهُمْ أُمِّيُونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابِ among them are Gentiles among the Jews among the Jews are Gentiles that they do not know the scripture so that means the Ummiyun that not one person they are Ummiyun they are Gentiles who do not know the, the scripture except through hearsay then assume that they know it this is this verse is talking about the Jews if you go to the, the Surah 3 verse number 20 if they argue with you then say I have simply submitted myself to God I and those who follow me you shall proclaim to those who receive the scripture there is a difference between the Ahl Kitab and Ummiyun. Ahl Kitab means the people who have the, the knowledge of the scripture and those who don't. You shall proclaim to those who receive the scripture as well as those who didn't. Well, Ummiyun. Would you submit? Would you submit to the Lord of the universe? Would you submit to God? If they submit, then they have been guided. But if they turn away, your sole mission is to deliver the message. God's messengers are mailmen. Just deliver the mail. That's all. If people are worthy of guidance, God is the one who is going to guide them. The, the next verse is also talking about the Jews, the Jewish people in, in the Quran. And uh, I'm just going to go to the point. The Jewish people at that, in, in, that this verse is talking about, they said... They said that we don't have to be honest when dealing with the Gentiles. We don't have to be honest with the people who do not know about the scripture. We don't have to be honest with the people. Did they say we don't have to be honest with the people who, can, who, are, who are illiterate? No. The, we, are, we, we don't have we are, we are the people Ahle Kitab we don't have to be honest with the people who are not Ahle Kitab look these verses in the Quran are clear in the heart and the soul of the people who truly submit to God Almighty God in Surah 56 or number 79 says La yamassuhu illa al mutaharun you cannot grasp the meaning of this Quran unless you're sincere. We must ask Almighty God, the teacher of the Quran, to teach us. We can talk about it. We can point at the verses. But God is the only one who can guide. God is the only one who guides and he guides in accordance with his knowledge as to who are the people who are worthy of his guidance. One of the reasons that the Muslims came up with this idea was that through the verses of the Quran, they knew that uh, Prophet Isa and Prophet Musa, they had miracles. So they're saying, okay, you know, you're a messenger of God, you're bringing uh, the Quran, what is your miracle? They wouldn't understand, of course, literary excellence of the Quran, the writing is so incredibly awesome. So the only thing they came up with, they said, oh, okay, his miracle is that this guy is illiterate. Look what he's writing. The contemporary of Prophet Muhammad, they knew he was 
educated. He was learned. He was a merchant. He was a successful person. They knew that he wrote the Quran with his own hand. These are stories they came, they came up with it later on, later after he was gone. Because they could not appreciate, yes, it is a fantastic piece of writing, but what's the miracle? They were looking up for a miracle like Moses, like, like Jesus. Verses in the Quran. If you go to Surah 10, verse number 20, it says, they say, how come no miracle came down to him from his Lord? They couldn't understand that this Quran is the miracle. Say, the future belongs to God, so wait, and I am waiting with you. Future. Obviously, he was commanded, probably Prophet Muhammad, he didn't did it. Prophet Muhammad just did what he was ordered to do. He wrote down these things because probably the future to him, probably he thought two days from later there's going to be a miracle coming. Although everybody was fascinated by the magnificence of the writing of the Quran. But when it says the future, the miracle of the Quran was destined to be revealed in the time of computer, in the time of technology. And then the people of our time, this generation, to find out how magnificent, how incredibly awesome this Quran is. And it is far, far, far beyond human fabrication. The next verse. They said, if only miracles could come down to him from his Lord, say all miracles come only from God. I am no more than a manifest warner. Is it not enough of a miracle that we send down to you this Quran? This book being recited to them. This is indeed a mercy and a reminder for people who believe. Is it not enough of a miracle that we send down to you this book? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Look, the Quran uh, when people understand what this Quran is all about. This Quran is magnificent. All the humans and jinns banded together, they cannot, there is nothing left out of it. As we will, I will, God willing, God willing, point at some of the things in the Quran that it is mind-boggling. It is an encrypted message. It is the writings and it is the mathematics of it that brings everything together. That's why God says nothing is left out of it. If somebody wants to say, okay, I don't want to deal with the uh, mathematical miracle of the Quran, they're going to reject the Quran. Everything in this Quran is put in a fantastic mathematical order. God has counted the number of all things. Surah 72, ayah number 22. 28 at the very end of it. Look, Almighty God says in the Quran that He has not given even one tenth of this miracle of the Quran to all the prophets that delivered messages before, combined. One tenth of this. Our proofs were recited to them. Perfectly clear. When our proofs are, were recited to them, perfectly clear, they said, this is a man who wants to divert you from the way your parents are worshipping. They also said, these are fabricated lies. Those who disbelieved also said about the truth that came to them. This is obviously magic. We did not give them any other books to study, nor did we send to them before you another warner. Those before them disbelieved, even though they did not see one-tenth of the miracles we have given to this generation. When they disbelieved my messengers, how severe was my retribution. Bringer, bigger miracles, more important miracles, bring about more responsibilities. 
The miracle of the Quran is a perpetual miracle. Think about the time of Moses and the time of uh, Isa ibn Maryam, the Jesus, the son of Mary. How many people were there when uh, the Messiah performed some of the miracles by God, God's leave? The rest of the population, they had to believe because some other people were telling them, oh, we were there, we saw something. But the miracle of the Quran is perpetual because this Quran is alive. You individually can connect if you submit to the Lord of the universe, if you ask God for guidance, if you ask the teacher of the Quran to open your eyes and your mind and your soul. If we receive light from Almighty God, our vision is going to be totally different. He's going to give us, God Almighty is going to give us access into the Quran. Access into the Quran. This Quran is mind boggling. This Quran is going to bring the corrupted foundation of the organized. I wouldn't want to say organized because I love the word organization, but I can call them professional religionists. The people who make uh, business with the name of God and creating religions, instead of worshipping the omnipotent Lord of the universe, the creator of all things, every one of them in their own way, they have created their own imaginary gods. And by the mean of those different gods that they have created, they have been so vicious and murderous towards one another. The time has come. Almighty God says you shall not accept any information unless you verify it for yourself. I've given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and you are responsible for using them. Uh, incidentally, some of these uh, scholars, uh, they say, no, it's not the brain, it's the heart. I've given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the, and the brain, they say it's the heart. Well, you know, uh, God has given us the eyes with which we can see, right? But we can shut our eyes and we don't see. God has given us ear with which we can hear. We can plug our ears and we are not going to hear. But heart is a pump. It's not under our control. It's going to keep on pumping. It is not the heart. It is the mind. The word for Aden. And God has not left anything out of this Quran. If you go to Surah 28, ayah number 10. And remember, 28 plus 10 is 38, which is 19 times 2. And the only surah in the Quran that has 38 verses is Surah Muhammad, the prophet through whom the Quran was sent down. Almighty God is uses both words, both, both words, for odd and also the Qal, to make sure that we understand the difference. God has given us the eyesight, the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and we, are, we must, we are responsible for using them. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe.